Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to our next webinar in the series that we have been hosting as Regenesis Business School Kenya. I would like to welcome our panelists, Mr. Humphrey, Mr. Shushant, and Mr. Bupesh, uh, becoming part of this beautiful discussion that we are going to have the future of HR in the digital age. And this time, our spotlight is on agriculture. Very much looking forward to the conversation that we're going to have today. Gentlemen, if you would like to introduce yourself, I'm going to hand that over to you. Uh, you will do yourself much more justice than I would ever do. So if you'd like to introduce yourself, your name, where you are from, and you are more than welcome to tell us a little bit about your company that you are working for, your and, and, and uh, maybe your, your philosophy towards agriculture within the Kenyan environment. I welcome you all participants. Thank you so much for being patient with us. And we welcome you to this webinar. Please allow yourself or please uh, be, uh, become part of the discussion by asking questions in the chat chat function. If you are part of the participants on the streaming service that's running as well, do not hesitate to ask your questions right there in Facebook, in on LinkedIn and so forth. The events team will make sure that your questions appear on our webinar link as well. I am looking forward to this session specifically because this uh, uh, industry is very close to my heart and should be close to everyone's heart as they feed us all. But um, I'm going to hand over to the participant uh, to, to the panelists so that they can introduce themselves. Uh, looking forward to this. Mr. Henry, if you would like to introduce yourself, please. Yeah, thank you very much, Linda. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Humphrey Wafula. I am the executive director for an organization called Farming Systems Kenya. This is an NGO based in Nakuru County, but we are working with farmers in eight counties, uh, namely Nakuru itself, there is Narok, Bumet, uh, Baringo County, Nyandarua County, Laikipia, West Pokot, Kakam and Kakamega County. Um, we are so much into agriculture, and our interventions mostly target the smallholder farmers who form about 80% of farmers in Kenya. So we try to intervene technologies and innovations with these smallholder farmers to ensure that they are able to you know, make a profit and also to meet their, their daily needs. Actually to transition them mostly from subsistence farming into commercial uh, farming. As an organization, our vision is to, 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 to envision seeing a vibrant, profitable, and sustainable farming community in Kenya. And this, we work very closely also with the research institutions. Uh, for instance, Kenya Agriculture Livestock Research Organization, whereby we obtain innovations and new technologies from research, and we act as a conduit to take this technology to the farmers. We also work very closely with universities, for instance, Egerton University and Masai Mara University. And we, we've been collaborating at various levels to take these modern technologies to our smallholder farmers. So for me, I'm so happy to be part of this uh, session. And I look forward to you know, learn as much as also contribute as much as possible uh, towards uh, our, 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 our discussions today. Thank you so much. Back to you, Linda. Thank you so much, Amphrey. That is such valuable work you are doing. And as an NGO, uh, it's so much hard work. And I, I, I suppose you see the need even more than everyone else uh, of us do. So I appreciate them. We are very much looking forward to hearing from you, having your fingers into so many pies. Right. that allows us within this environment to talk about digitization, to talk about technology. And we're looking forward um, to hearing what's up there. Um, it's always very interesting. Mr. Sushant, if you would like to introduce yourself and your company as well. Yep. Uh, thanks, uh, Linda. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Sushant, uh, working with the uh, Black Tulip Group since last seven years as a Deputy General Manager taking care of uh, around a 70 hectare farm with around uh, 
1100 people uh, working on board um, our vision and mission is just to grow the flowers which is uh, environmentally safe and uh, which makes uh, people uh, throughout happy with the beautiful flowers and uh, as my my background i am a agriculture bachelor degree holding with a postgraduate in agri agribusiness management from mumbai university uh, since last 11 years i'm working in kenya i uh, working in kenya uh, with the flower sector some small time i worked in the vegetable sector so it's a good chance to express myself uh, as i got an invitation to difficulties what we are facing in the industry as a hr department in the focus and what are our needs i can i'll be talking about that as a discussion comes up thank you thank you so much Sant. it's so good to see you again and hear from you again um, yeah. mr bupesh would you like to introduce yourself please <laughs> thank you so much linda and uh, as always i'm delighted to be in panel with such uh, eminent personalities uh, really thankful for uh, Mr. Hamtree, Mr. Sushant, uh, and yourself, Linda, to you know to be a part of this uh, wonderful discussion. So I I work as a CEO for uh, Regenesis Business School in Kenya, and uh, I'm looking at uh, you know Kenya happens to be the gateway for our entire East Africa. So this is really really important, and uh, you know uh, the agri business and the hold of agriculture in the East African countries. I'm really looking forward to, you know, to the inputs uh, coming from Mr. Humphrey, Mr. Sushan. And I'm personally excited about, you know, how the landscape is changing, you know, uh, with, with introduction of precision farming, with introduction of renewable energy, you know, how, how uh, manpower needs are changing with the introduction of technology. So I think uh, it's going to be a, it's going to be a wonderful, exciting uh, conversation. And uh, uh, also it's going to be very, very, uh, thoughtful and uh, going to be a learning experience for all the young professionals who are joining us on, on multiple platforms and who are looking forward to veterans like Mr. Humphrey Shishran and yourself, Linda, to, you know, to resort a lot of their day-to-day -day problems and looking forward for those inputs from these veterans. So really, you know, let's, let's just kick off the session and, and uh, give people what they're looking fun. forward to. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Let's have fun. So, read a lot about agriculture within Kenya. I always, I, I, I just, like I said, I've, I've got a very, um, I'm very passionate about the industry and, and and how it should be nurtured and how it should be looked at by every other industry because we all rely on it. So I've read that 33% uh, of Kenya's uh, um, GDP actually relies on the agriculture sector. Some say 32, some say 28, uh, but, but it seems as though the consensus is about 33 it also says, and this to me is, is crucial, that 40% of the population is employed by the industry, but 70% of the rural population, and maybe Mr. Humphrey, you, you deal with this immediately and, and every day, 70% of the rural population is employed by your industry, right? So that in itself, I think, is, a, is, is, is a remarkable for the industry. You carry a lot of responsibility for the country, right? You carry a lot of, of, uh, um, a lot of, a lot of people's lives in your hand as an industry, right? But that does not just uh, um, come easy. So I'm going to kick off this with a question to both of the, the panelists and maybe uh, Mr. Bupesh, you can also... Um, you can also add to that. I would like to know what do you see, or what do you view, the key challenges of the industry. And Ms. Humphrey, you started talking about it just a little bit when you when you alluded to the fact that you are helping people from what what substance farming to commercial farming, right? That's also very interesting. I would love to. I would love you to elaborate on that. But maybe if you can highlight the key challenges within your environment. Um, when it comes to to your sector in this digital period well thank you so much linda i think maybe i can go first yes please. um one of the biggest challenge in relation to uh especially what we are discussing today the digital age um 
right now is the fact that most of the farmers are elderly. I think the statistics showing that uh, around 60% of the farming community, they are over 60 years and above. And I think that is a big challenge when it comes to, you know, when you want to bring in technology into our production systems. Already, when you talk of maybe the new technologies using internet, using mobile phones, using uh, computers, and all these technologies, that caliber of farmers, it's not very easy for them to, you know, adopt these new farming technologies. So that is one of the biggest challenge that uh, uh, we are facing. But also the other challenge is there is very limited, uh, you know, dissemination of these new technologies and skills from research organizations and institutions to the farmers. And that's what we as Farming Systems Kenya are trying to do, trying to act as a link between the research organizations and the farmers, that we are able to convey these technologies to the farmers and also train them so that they are able to utilize them at their level as, as smallholder farmers. But then we know over and above that, there are many other challenges, uh, especially for the smallholder farmers. Most of the agricultural or most of the finance institutions also look at them at, as a high risk, you know, uh, a population or maybe for lack of a better word. So when it comes to access to credit, uh, our farmers don't really get easy access to credit. And that is also another um, impairment. Now, looking at the new technologies, for instance, where we are seeing uh, people using drones, uh, people using, you know, all these robotics and other technologies, maybe some technologies to monitor soil mo moisture when you're doing irrigation and all that. All these need money, so it needs capital. Now, when we have all these challenges in terms of act and uh, it's not easy to access finances, it makes these farmers, they are not able to, you know, invest in these technologies. Now, I think that is just to a small extent, but we also know the high cost of inputs. It's a challenge to our farmers. And also one of the other biggest challenges, if we look at the future generation, somebody say the next billionaires are going to be the farming community. But in Kenya, we are seeing a challenge because we are not able to successfully bring youth on board. And these are the people who are tech savvy. Yeah, you know, the young people but most of them don't really like agriculture. So that is another very big challenge. Uh, at our level, we are trying everything you know, within our capacity to bring on board the youth. We are seeing a bit of some of them taking up the, 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 the farming, but it's still a national challenge. So I think it's high time that maybe we will be looking at how to also bring other players in, into this to ensure that the youth are, are able to, uh, embrace agriculture. And of course, we know in the future, the population is growing. So there is huge potential to supply food and to feed this growing population. So it is true. The next billionaires in Africa are going to be farmers. But then it depends on how we'll package all this. And I like what we are discussing because now bringing in technology, I think will also attract, attract the youth into this sector. I think I would want to and there for the moment, so to give my colleagues also a chance to contribute. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's definitely a question that I think is, is a global one. How do we ensure that the, the, the agriculture sector is attractive for youth um, uh, to enter into? You know, and, and I do think that there are ways in which we can, and I think technology, like you are saying, is definitely one of the ways that we can bring them into. And Rupesh mentioned something, this renewable and sustainable farming, how, how, how do we allow that to become part of the narrative of the use as well every day, you know. Sushant, if you would like to share your key challenges uh, taking care of such a huge uh, and say population of people yeah. on your farm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, like uh, Mr. Humphrey said, uh, the key challenge youngsters to bring in the agriculture is a big challenge. And uh, I can say uh, why that is a challenge as a, as a, as an industry is that they're not looking, you know, as youngsters, they're not looking as a, 
as a first uh, first uh, preference as agriculture industry because they look it as if somebody is doing a farming is like uh, somebody doesn't get the job or somebody is not educated that is a person goes and do that jobs so i think uh, we need to change the mindset of the people from from bottom to top like in the education system i think that is the where the change can happen where if the government or some private sector industry or institutes can introduce some small chapters for agriculture and then from the childhood they will get passionate about agriculture how the agriculture ch can change the world because currently just uh, you know uh, in how what we the agriculture is the one which can impact the world overall because the end of the day is a food and which affects the environment very well so and then i can see the uh, when there is uh, for all the problems which is in the world i can say because i know in and out in the agriculture agriculture is the solution for it but still people ignore it because there is no money in it so where there is a money in it then uh, people give the importance to that industry so where i can say that so through the education system only we can bring the importance to the agriculture because i can just give as an example in india just uh, you know just i'm youngster like 34 year old and then i was going for the marriage uh, it's like a secondary option when uh, for the girls so when they you will say that uh, you are doing farming they will say no i don't want somebody who is doing farming i i would like to prefer who is engineer who is a doctor or uh, who is architecture so it's you know the preference is changing because they see it like who does the farming how the problems are there is about the prices today you can go and get a market of 100 shilling per kg tomato tomorrow after some days it can be 10 shilling 5 shilling 20 shilling so it's not a constant because there's no msp because and when the government look at the prices uh they they prefer the agriculture goods as a primary goods where the fluc the inflation can affect where the people can get angry and uh, oat, oat, for the oat banks, the government don't want to fix the MSP for it. So when people look at it, the secondary, they don't want the prices to go up. Because just to set the example in India, uh, onions, uh, where India used to do the export of onions, and the prices went until like, like 100 rupees per kilo. And then it's very sensitive for the, uh, the common people in India for the onion to be costly. And then government stopped the export and then prices went back to the 30, 40 rupees. And you can see how the government changing the policy and then it is affecting the farmers. So in two months, these farmers who were doing the tomatoes and onions got good money. And after now, just last two weeks, it's just 10 rupees, 20 rupees. Now they are throwing, they're giving to the animals to eat the tomatoes. So this type of things doesn't make the importance to the agriculture and then the farming sector is getting depleted and depleted and when we look at overall the prices how they are changing for the oil the inputs which we need for the agriculture sector the prices for the agri outputs are not increasing in the vice versa so when we compare the 10 years what was the price for the oil or the petrol or diesel and then when we compare the price of tomato or wheat or rice in, they are not in proportion. So profit margin in agriculture is just going down and down. And that's why I see there is no importance or there is no money which is getting agriculture. So, so people are giving less importance to agriculture. So I can say it's like a money oriented when you go to get a good money. So there you can uh, have the people can go divert. And for the students or the new youngsters, uh, I can say it's not a, like there's no money, but if they do right way with the right approach, with the right market research, there's a good money. Because if you go for the export or uh, where the middleman levels can be get avoided, then then there can be good money. So if youngsters can come in this sector with knowing that what they're going to do it and with the likeness, means they should feel and they need to be passionate about it. And for that, we need to create awareness about the agriculture, how the sector is important for the industry. If that awareness comes in, then I think there's a good way for agriculture. And in digital way, I can say uh, in as a HR perspective, as a company perspective, I can say a lot of uh, things are changed after COVID. People used to do the uh, master role attendance earlier. 
now after that we went for the hand punch and now we are doing the face recognition attendance so with that at least accuracy is coming in industry or uh, because to handle the 1100 people is big mob so where uh, we miss that somebody's annual leaves are not accurate somebody's attendance is not accurate somebody can support us the document but with this digitalization we see that accuracy is coming we are able to plan the labor very well and then uh, we can able to do the our planning for the season high season low season and then planning their annual leaves as per that then uh, per, then the ships planning also is come becoming better so only uh, so that is a positive things about the digitalization in specific hr industry but i see negativity is only the the cost is very high because you know it is uh, getting done by the it sector and everybody knows how the it sector is booming up so the cost on that technology is very high and where another sectors which like banking sector or pharmaceutical sector they have the money they have the muscle power and they can offer that new technologies very well but for agriculture sector where the profit margins are just going down and down to get this digital things is quite difficult or quite uh, costly for the agriculture industry that is what i can say and then the getting the people uh, know this uh, is also very difficult skilled people because when we do overall um uh, what we have with the people labor force in agriculture like i can say 70 80% are unskilled people 20% are only the skilled people which uh, comes for the city and then 70% comes from rural area so uh, so that is another challenge that they are not known to the digitalization and then uh, to improve or to adapt the new system is very difficult because when any time the whenever there is a new things comes up always there is a repulsion people don't want new change so always we see there is a repulsion than the impo giving importance so we need the people who are positive minded which which we skilled people who knows the new ways new system and then when the people are looking into it i think they need to know the objective of it and what we are going to gain out of it that's what i can say a business approach towards what is a business right and i yeah. think that's i think the misconception when it comes to to agriculture is the absolute multiple faceted individual it takes in order to run a business like that or in order to 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 run a farm uh bupesh i saw your hand was up um did you why would you would you like to add <laughs> sure uh, so uh, you know uh, something which uh, mr humphrey started and uh, reckoned by mr shushant also you know i love the fact that uh, you know uh, humphrey quoted the fact that the next billionaire is going to be from the farming industry and i i think he's referring to the same uh, article that i also went through was like you know uh, which which cited that you know it's it's an opportunity in adversity it's it's all about the place is constantly shrinking and and for the very valid reasons uh, uh, mr humphrey and shushant uh, brought up right the, the youth is not very excited to come into it uh, you know the most of the most of the uh, farmers and in most of the areas and geographies are are old and the introduction of technology and all that but eventually i think that's that's one area that everybody is seeing now right so everybody is seeing this space shrinking uh, and it is inevitable that uh, the demand's not going to go down we are uh, you know a little over 600 crore people which needs to be fed constantly right and yep. uh, you know some of the some of the best uh, economists do say that you know eventually a time will come and that time is not that far the time is not mm. that far that uh, you know a lot of industries will realize that uh, the survival is not going to be there if we don't invest uh, into into industries like agri and uh, there will be a 360 degree holistic approach uh, you know governments have to get into it you know governments have to make it a little more lucrative so like uh, sushant cited an example of tomatoes and, and onions you know in even run of the geographies where in uh, you know uh, just a couple of months back it was like you know skyrocketed and then suddenly you know now it's being fed to the animals right so i i think yeah. uh, you know governments across the globe they are realizing introductions of minimum sales prices introduction of uh, you know the to point uh, humphrey said the ease of technology and the ease of credit uh, to be passed on to 
you know these these farmers and and making the entire ecosystem a little more lucrative uh, because you know none of us going to survive <laughs> you know if this industry just goes down the yep. way uh, you know we we all are anticipating and the downwards growth uh, but then uh, you know if i look at the positive side of things uh, you know there are countries and there are geographies uh, which have taken some steps around uh, you know some of the areas that we recently talked about right so the ease of getting credit the ease of getting credit in some of the geographies where agriculture is one of the main businesses is getting easier you know the introduction of technology is getting easier youth uh, is really excited in in you know i know you know uh, uh, traditionally youth has not been excited about it and for uh, you know for one of the reasons sushant also cited up <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but at the same point in time i think uh, you know with 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 the introduction of new technology and uh, now we see a lot of farm to table concepts right so uh, they are they are cutting middlemen they are cutting uh, you know middlemen yep. they are cutting governments they are cutting uh, you know the margins which has been absorbed by these people uh, so farm to table is some of the concepts uh, farm fresh vegetables uh, you know and and uh, in some of the stories that i have read recently they've been processing it themselves right so you know from from growing uh, fruits to making you know uh, you know the, the by products and the after products themselves and putting on those units and and uh, creating an entire ecosystem so why yes there is a lot that needs to be done uh, i think uh, there is some bit of realization uh in in some segments of governments in some segments of uh, ngos and uh, but yes there is a lot of work to be done so you know back to you linda thank you very much for the comments that you make and i think you you 100% correct and maybe humphrey you can tell us a little bit more about that the attractiveness of technology which is something that seems to that we under the perception that only uh, not only that the youth that attracts youth because because it's uh, technology right and i like also i would like to to think um I, I like your suggestion as well, um, Sushant, where we are saying that people need to make be made aware at a bit much earlier age about the importance of the agriculture industry within the education system already. I mean, if we, if we think back, what did we learn? Unless if you were in a in a school directed towards farming, uh, we just learn biology and seeds and how it grows and things like that, but not the effort it takes to make it grow right, um, and how the conditions in which it is can influence its growth, right? So my question, therefore, will be, yes, there's a sense of, of making the industry attractive too, but what are already very attractive in the agriculture? And, and Humphrey, you, you deal with small businesses, you deal with large ones, you deal with research that's happening and, and, and things that are out there that that uh, we that will scare us i think so so let's start with the positive things first right but uh, tell us about what is so attractive about the industry oh what yeah yeah thank you thank you so much um i want i want to say there is quite a lot of wonderful and positive things uh happening in the in the industry Mm -hmm. uh, recently, we've been uh, implementing some programs by Kenya Agriculture and Livestock Research Organization. Amazingly, we know that one of the challenges also that we haven't mentioned is the issue of the climate change. But mm -hmm. then this organization has come up with a lot of climate change um, adaptation technologies, allow me to say so. And uh, we've... Uh, taking these technologies to our farmers, and we are seeing a lot of things happening. Uh, for instance, there are new improved chicken varieties that are able to grow faster, gain weight faster, and so they obtain market, uh, you know, you, you're able to sell them at a relatively earlier, you know, age as compared to the traditional chicken. Uh, we have done this in uh, parts of Pomet, Narok, and uh, Baringo, and a lot of positive feedback is forthcoming. So we are seeing farmers are able to make money very quickly, and uh, they are able to support, you know, their household, they are able to take their children to school. Wonderful stories coming up. Um, we have also been able to introduce some food uh, crops that are, you know, resilient to 
the dry conditions and households are also becoming more food secure. But then one thing that we realize is that aspect of linking farmers to market. And as uh, 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 my friend Bupesh, maybe you will allow me if I don't pronounce your name well, but like you say, actually farmers are now adding value to their produce and they are taking control of the value chain. Now, that is one of the areas I think where farmers have been losing because a lot of uh, middlemen have been taking advantage of farmers. But now as we come in, train the farmers and they're taking control of the value chains, we are seeing a lot of farmers getting transformed. And now more, ma more money is getting into the pockets of the farmers. Um, we are also introducing other value chains that are able to you know, uh, make money quickly trying to also entice the youth, those ones, because youth want money quickly. So we are looking at th things like chicken and also maybe pig farming uh, as a way of enticing them, because you know, with these value chains, you can make money very quickly. Um, we are looking at, you know, I see whereby right now, people are using things like, you know, the, what do you call these? The, the, these, the plants, the small, the drones, sorry. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. To do maybe uh, spraying and all that. And I see when agriculture becomes simplified, I think that's how we are going to attract the youth into, into agriculture. But also now we are also trying to explore the area of using technology to maybe detect when, when to irrigate, and uh, maybe when to maybe spray and all that and automate all these systems. When those systems are brought on board, then I think life becomes so much easier and uh, people like the youth especially will be attracted uh, into the sector. Technology, recently, I think we've also seen whereby we uh, want to bring in some aspects of ICT into agriculture. And uh, we are seeing ICT um, uh, individuals in ICT coming on board. As they do their programs, for instance, it's a program, they also are able to learn agriculture. And you find some of them also interested to practice uh, agriculture in their own maybe farms or family uh, farms. So I think there is a lot of opportunity uh, the only few challenges that we need to do to deal with is because most, mostly we are depending on rain-fed agriculture, and therefore you find that when we produce a crop, there are incidences whereby all the crop come into production at the same time. So you have what we call, you know, oversupply, and you know the the rule of demand and supply applies in every value chain. So it's only how to help the, our farmers on how to maybe conserve and and, and, and store and play around with the rule of supply and demand so that we are avoiding oversupplying, uh, which will automatically make the price go down and therefore farmers will receive lower prices. I think that's what I would say. I would also allow my colleagues also maybe to contribute a little bit uh, towards the same. Thank you. Yeah. That's very interesting, and I think you you also uh, alluded to that social the economy of things, you know, um, and how governments regulate pricing and supply and demand. It's such a you know it's a, it's a it's a business related issue that 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 every farmer knows, and they know it instinctively, or, or you know uh, things like that. But I hear what you are saying. Maybe there's a level of of training that needs to take place in the variety. Of what you plan, uh, what you what you plant, and the land that is available to you, and how to maximize that land. So, Shanta, I don't know if you would like to add to that or go back yeah, to yeah. the original question. Yeah. Yes, yes. You know, a lot of positive things are there in agriculture. That's why I selected as a course, and I come to this uh, sector. <laughs> it's not and only you married. You found it yes. anyway. <laughs> yes, yes, she's also agriculture graduate. So. You know? <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> yes. Yes. Are you both bridges? Yes, yes. 
uh, in this industry uh, what you know uh, everybody says like you know how we, this industry is very positive or where we can make a good money because in this is is the only one industry where you put a one seat and out of one seat you can get like 1000 or 2000 seats out of it so that is a positive about it but if you do it the right manner with the right skills uh, and uh, with the right approach we can enable this industry to make profitable because i see this industry is very scattered because uh, when uh, there's a few business means few farms uh, they are probably make the, making the profit or for the farmers uh, how mr hempery said it's 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 rain fed uh, agriculture so when everybody goes to make a dams or to make a proper planning for the reservation of water it can be made very well but for that planning is very very important and when you look at, at the farmers they are not educated planning is missing because if you go and start the business you know objective objective is set after the objective planning is done after the planning execution is done the market planning already is done your product is already sold like 70 80 percent you do the marketing for the 20 percent so you know farm has a strategy because there's a there's a people who are educated and then they do the planning properly and then they make they make sure that business is successful but for the farmers uh, to plan that type of training is very important which i feel and as mr Empley is doing the through ngo is very good but where they need to understand that this all the aspects about the schools the planning objective then the discussing marketing and bringing the things on the board that is very important because in uh, in a lot of places i see the farmers they know how to produce but they don't know how to market and then that big chunk of the profit goes to the middleman and then uh, in the hand of the farmers there's nothing is left behind and and this this is the gap i can feel the if the youngsters come in they can able to fill the gap because in, youngsters are enthusiastic they are ready to learn some new things they are adaptive to the new technologies and then now with the social media you can get the information very fast you can uh, we can call somebody from outside and you can get gather the information because earlier what you used to do the whom you are talking you don't know the who is a buyer because sometimes a lot of people send the produce and they don't get the money and they say that they, they get fooled uh, for the product. But nowadays you can travel very fast, you can communicate, you can get a background information. And if the youngsters can came in and then they can be, they can, they can fill this bridge in between, which is missing. And in agriculture, a lot of things are there. There's apiculture, there is a poultry business. Uh, then there is a horticulture you can produce the fruits you can produce the vegetables so there's a big industry in like a kenya floriculture is a big industry you can start your own business you can sell locally so a lot of opportunities are there only people uh, the students or people are missing to grab the opportunity and a good thing about the africa or uh, like a kenya is is a, in the is a middle is a, like a, in the heart of the whole world if you look at, at the geography and how the Kenya is set or Africa is in the center. So you can, in the right side, there is America, left side, there is a Europe. And then uh, as a nation, they are not charging import duties for the Africa for, for current way. And the weather wise is very good weather. Labor is plenty available. And with that, you can, a lot of opportunities are there, but only the missing part is people are not there to grab the opportunities, what I can say. So for that, educating the youngster or having some seminars for the youngsters to bring them on board and to tell how the opportunities are there and how there's a money in it. I think that bridge will get filled up because still that opportunities are not seen by a lot of youngsters. Yeah. Yeah, I think they're still locked in the idea that when it means if you're a businessman, you must carry a briefcase and, and wear a suit every day. And that yeah. is not relevant. And it's not relevant even in business because people work from home. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. So, you know, I think it is a, 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 a mind shift that needs to be made when it comes to our belief or our belief of what agriculture is traditionally, where, where uh, you know, it's all about you know, they get a, a five with a stick hitting the animals towards somewhere and things like that. And we know that that is, that is not how we farm anymore. That is, 
you know, it's beyond where we go, although there are traditional farmers that are still doing that. But the image of what it is and what it takes to be successful in this industry um, is, is, is just distorted. And the success that you can reach, like you said, Humphrey, the next billionaire is, is from, will be from the farming industry. Yeah. Because unless we, we, we get it moving into the right direction, what we are producing and what we are selling is going to become more and more um, attractive and expensive and needed, right? Uh, yeah, because yeah, yeah, that's right. Because the passion need, uh, need to be there. Because I see a lot of IT sector people, uh, they work for 10, 15 years, they get good salary, they get, get good money, and they get bored with the sitting in front of the computers and all that. And then they enter in the agriculture sector because I have a lot of friends and I see mostly they are doing after 10, 15 years, just they go for retired and then they buy some land and with they, they do the farming with some profession, with passion. And I see they're getting good money out of it. So for that, passion is needed. And I see the marketing part, which is missing in agriculture, is, you know, when you go to another, all the sectors. Uh, so when we are watching also TVs, have you seen any ads where you can see that come in agriculture, you get a lot of money, you'll be millionaire, you'll get a lot of jobs. That type of advertisements are not there on the TVs. Mm -hmm. Because when you watch the TVs or all the social media, they will talk about doctors, they will talk about the engineer, they will talk about the pharmaceuticals, and everybody's mind get attracted there. But in agriculture, that mind is not getting attracted, I, I can say. So that's why it's like a, a, people are still looking at it as a downfall. And I can say through the education or through the education system or through some seminars, we need to tell the people uh, that food is uh, not a, just a food to fill your stomach, it's a medicine. Anyhow, when you look at it, the food is a medicine. A lot of uh, traditional things, when you look at it, how the food was eaten by the people is totally different how we are eating now. The timings, the type of the food, the mix up of the proteins, fibers, carbohydrates is totally different. Now we just eat to fill the stomach or for our tongue. Tongue on this, so we are eating that. So the whole agenda, what was there in the farming industry and which is set by our ancestors is not there. So we need to go back to our roots where uh, the, these things was there and which need to be get highlighted. So when you highlight the things, then it will be done. Because like uh, now currently, the which is booming industry ag in agriculture is like organic farming. Because now after COVID, people are come to know how is organic farming, how it is important. Means medicine only will not cure you or they will not keep you updated with your health. Only good food can keep you updated. Because in COVID time, a lot of people got good medicine, good hospitals, top hospital, but still died. But the people who was in the villages, were doing day-to-day -day activities, they were not feared, they were eating good food, good weather, good air, good soil, good uh, community, and they survived. So people are understanding indirectly, but just exposure is not there or might be that type of uh, uh, advertisement or that type of spreading not happen. So still it is under the blanket, but it's coming out. I see the lot of people are preferring the organic farming they're getting good prices for their uh, produces and people who are doing organic farming also enjoying because they they feel that they are giving something good to the to the society to the environment so it's just about the feel and then how the things will happen uh, in upcoming days because that's true millionaire is not far away from agriculture because now currently also i see the food crisis have become more because of the the global warming the rainfall pattern is not the same or weather pattern is not the same how it used to be earlier 10 years back because our, now before the last two years we used to do the farming based on the old records of the rainfall or whether this month we feel rain will come this month it will be cold but nowadays it's like one month late or one month early so now the al nino is also coming up which we projected next month, but still 50% people say they it will come, 50% people will say El Nino will not come. So is uh, global warming is changing the all the aspects of the people thinking how they were doing and the farming also, new ways to do the farming, where sustainability come in the farming. Yeah. Oh. And I think um, it, it, it embraces so many goals. 
uh, it embraces global goals, sustainable development goals. It embraces our African agenda, where we the Africa we want. Um, it embraces national goals, your national goals when it comes to feeding the nation, when it comes to ensure sustainability and renewability, uh, and renewable uh, methods in which to use the land, the only land that you have, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I think, um, yeah, the, the technology uh, that you were talking about earlier, looking at the moisture around, uh, looking at uh, the moisture in the soil, how much should we invest, how much shouldn't we invest in irrigation, shall we wait for the rain and things like that. It's very attractive. Uh, um, I would say, but it's, it, it's, it's a, attractive technology to use you know data and analyzing the data that's around you in the land in the plants in in the people that you are managing i don't know humphrey if you would like to add to that for you Rupesh? uh i i would just uh see if humphrey wants to go first so i can i can sure. get uh, Rupesh, you can go first. I put you on the spot, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I think, uh, so there are there are two pieces to it. So when, when I, you know, Linda, when you talk about technology, right? So I don't, I don't not only look at technology at the time of produce, right? <laughs> so, you know, majorly when we talk about technology, uh, we're talking about the technology related to a better produce, right? Uh, but then um, I think a very smart term coined by both, uh, you know, fellow panelists was, you know, the business sense, the marketing. That is also technology. So what do we mean by technology? Technology are nothing but the means to, you know, uh, get the overall value chain better, right? So, so yes, one part of technology, and then, uh, you know, I, I I talked in the beginning about it, the precision farming, right? So all the tools which helps you to predict the rain, uh, you know, the areas where water is not there, then there is drip farming, uh, you know, the, the, the drip irrigation, a lot of new things are coming, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, now the pesticides or, or the other manures are being uh, used by GPS, uh, you know, enabled tractors. Uh, uh, and then in the large farms, you know, the, the all good Teslas of the world. <clears throat> so we, we are also looking at driverless tractors now and then whatnot and whatnot, right? So to, in the each and every aspect of it, uh, but at the same point in time, you know, the other aspect of it is it's inducing the, you know, the the analytics, uh, data, business sense into 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 it, right? So I, I, I thoroughly, uh, you know, kind of uh, agree with, with both my panelists that, uh, you know, the business sense uh, is this is kind of, I wouldn't say missing, but it's just that uh, that has nobody ever felt that, you know, this industry could also need that, right? Marketing is a big, yeah. big thing, you know, while every other industry, they are constantly feeding you information, you know, this is good for you, right from, you know, your consumables, right from your day-to-day uh, -day, uh, utilities, there's tons of, uh, you know, your food habits, what you need to eat, but that's all around processed food. That's all around your day-to-day -day utilities. That's all around your, you know, other aspects of your life. Nobody ever emphasized on the fact that, you know, food, which is the most basic and the most essential resource of it, right? Uh, that's also important. So what sort of food, what sort of farming, what sort of uh, produce that needs to be built up? And there's, there's whatsoever no marketing around it. So there are two aspects of marketing. You know, the first is nobody's nobody's feeding that information to people, right? And and the second part of marketing, which I understand is uh, uh, is is for the for the farmers itself, right? Uh, the post produce marketing, which is for themselves, right? To be able to understand the entire value chain, to be able to market their own product, to be able to cut that middleman, which has I think for hundreds of years that has been the biggest challenge for mark, uh, for farmers, right? So you know they they do good, they still end up uh, you know making the right kind of crop, but because of the management, right? So we we talked about you know tomatoes being being fed to animals, right? But then there are people who are making you know uh, the byproducts of tomatoes. They have the processing units, and and you know when the market gives them the right produce and the right uh, pricing, they push it to the market. When the you know markets are low, those are the seasons when they you know uh, create those byproducts. So I think that's uh, because we believe it or not, uh, you know the the produce relating technology will get enabled. You know no matter how. Of course, it's going to take time. It requires uh, 
uh, a lot of ecosystems to be created. But I think what more is required at the same point, or if not more, equally important is to make these, uh, you know, make these small business owners, uh, you know, uh, and enable them to be able to make the best out of their crop. You know, uh, for hundreds of years, we've always, uh, always concentrated on, you know, just making the best crop, you know, bringing out the best crop, just, just bringing out the best produce. Uh, but then now we are saying that despite making the best produce, you know, they get into, you know, some sort of losses if there's not an MSP being introduced by, uh, or there's a shift in the market, if there's a seasonal change in the market. So that that's that my two cents on, on the subject. Thank you very much, Pupesh. Maybe, Humphrey, you can share some of your experience as well when it comes to this. You spoke about the sustainable, of the, uh, the substance from uh, moving them towards being more commercial. What are the type of things that you, that you, that you motivate? that allows for these farms to move from the one to the other, because it's a huge shift. And it, it makes a huge difference in economies and, and, and communities and so forth. I don't know, Humphrey, is that a fair question to ask you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. As an organization, we are really working hard to introduce these new technologies. As my fellow panelists have said, such technologies as drip irrigation to the farmers, and uh, they are slowly taking it uh, up. But I see a lot of more opportunities, especially my friend uh, Shushan said, uh, you know, looking at food as medicine, I really like that idea. And uh, with such technologies as precision farming, whereby now you only supply, if it is inputs, it's the inputs that are needed. And you only determine the, 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 the nutrients that are needed through technologies that are able to test, you know, the, co the, the, the content or the quantities of these minerals in the soil, and the same information is fed into the system, which now ensures those nutrients are supplied. So I see a lot of opportunities because right now what farmers are doing, we just know that if you want to produce maize, you need two bags of DAP fertilizer, you need two bags of maybe CAN, there's just, just that general information. At times, you don't really need that. And we've seen our soils slowly becoming acidic because of, 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 of our supplying uh, DAP, that is phosphorus. Why? Because at times we do not have even the, 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 the report from the soil testing. We are just supplying these uh, fertilizers. Eventually, it spoils our soils. And again, it affects the quality, quality of the food that we produce. So eventually we're not producing good quality food, which will be medicine to us, but maybe we are producing something that can be poisonous. But with precision farming, now it enables you to narrow down to the nutrients that are required, the exact quantities of water that you need to supply, and all this, it, 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 it's not exact to the point. So it, it, it cushions the farmers from you know, going to buy a lot of inputs maybe when they did not really need it. I, I, and I see these as, you know, slowly, we are, that's where we're going. And when you supply only what is needed, then your cost of production goes down. Yeah. As yeah. compared to the way it is right now that we just know that, you know, it, uh, that you need two bags of fertilizer of DAP. It's just that, that general information that farmers are operating with right now. But I really, desire to see that time when farmers will embrace precision farming, precision agriculture. Um, I also see the opportunities, you know, with these technologies, now one of the biggest problems we've been struggling with is, for instance, when it comes to tomatoes, that our tomatoes are oversprayed with, uh, you know, these pesticides and all that. But with technology, you know, we will be able to have access to whether it's machines that are, are able to test these uh, tomatoes and tell you whether they have um, maybe toxins in, in, in them. So we are going to adhere to the minimum residue levels and our produce will be, you know, good for consumption to all of us. Right now, we're just grappling. You don't know whether the tomatoes, the skuma wiki on your table is really safe for you. But mm. now with technology, it will be very easy to test and to know that even you as a consumer, whatever you're consuming is of the quality that you really desire. So now that is when the food will really become the medicine. Because we know that with the 
we, when you're eating, you know, the right quantities of all these, you know, um, vitamins, uh, proteins, as it is required, mm. uh, then we will keep off a lot of these diseases that we are seeing currently. So for me, I really see a lot of opportunities with technology, and I would really challenge, you know, all the industry players to embrace technology. That's the way we should go. I'll give an example whereby Kenya lost market for meat, for beef. I don't know whether it is to UK, and we lost that market to Botswana. Why? Because most of our farmers here were treating their own livestock. And because they are not technicians, they would overdose on some of these uh, maybe antibacterials and all that. And so when the meat goes to UK, they test the meat. It does not meet the minimum requirements. And that's how we lost our market. But with this, when we embrace technology and we ensure that we are there and we are able to test these products even before they go abroad, uh, it, it also helps, you know, uh, our, our, our country, you know. So there is a lot, a lot of benefits that come with embracing technology. And I see that's where we are going progressively and how I desire that it happens fast. So that would be my two cents contribution. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ampri. Susan, would you like to add to that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, how Mr. Ampri said, yeah, technology plays a very important ro role in, uh, in all the sectors because with the technology, you can progress uh, in current system. You can be more analytic what you are doing it. Just you will not do the things what used to be done with uh, technology you can be analytic you can be cost saver you can uh, do a lot of things uh, in less time that's why we want the technology and uh, about the agriculture sector the irrigation in the it's like a sprinkler or drip irrigation so it can be like a cost saving or the saving the water you can manage the uh, irrigation throughout the year if there is no rain still you can produce so when you produce something throughout the year then this uh, price fluctuation or or the supply fluctuations will not happen you can able to do the things as per the requirements as per the market because there's some specific period when there is no rain we see the prices goes up and the same specific period if you have drip irrigation you can able to do the things right way and then another thing about the, the the use of the fertilizers, use of chemicals, you know, you need to be cost saver. So to make the business profitable and uh, you can save the cost through this technology like a drip irrigation. Then another is like a, there's a systems where you can do proper scouting, you can do the soil testing. And with that, you can know what you need, what you don't need. And there's no need to do ex anything extra. Always less is also bad, more is also bad. Is better to go with the balanced way and uh, with the technology we can uh, able to do it but that would need to be understand the people is not sometimes people think uh, when i put one kg of uh, calcium nitrate or uh, when i put two bags my production will go up it doesn't happen because it plants becomes more susceptible to pest and disease because you are doing overdosing and I, always there is a, when we do the research there's antagonism effect or synergy effect on the soil when do uh, sometimes like a calcium when you have excess you do, you block magnesium when you have excess magnesium you block potassium so there's a synergy and uh, antagonism effect is there which farmer doesn't don't know always they think because there's a marketing Again, there is a lot of agrovets are there, a lot of suppliers are there. They will say just put, put, put. Your production will get double, triple, but doesn't happen. And there is always hope. You know, when the marketing people comes, it's like tomorrow I'm going to grow like a gold in the, my farm. <laughs> my production will be from one tons to will be 10 <laughs> tons, 20, but, but doesn't happen like that. It's, it's not a rocket science where the things will be get changed overnight. So, but people is people, human being is yeah. human being. So it's a mindset. So marketing people, whatever they say, well, we should do what, what is right and what things people are saying need to be done because I can give the good example of it. Uh, just uh, for last so short term in 2000, around 13, 14, I went back to India. I thought to go back to educate the people to do the consultancy. And I was visiting the farmers in India. They were doing the rose farming. And 
some of you know these are small farmers like one uh, one hectare two hectare and they 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 not needed to be put lot of costly equipments there but only because of marketing they were putting something like 100000 200000 shilling worth of the machines to operate that one and there are some simple machines was there around 5000 10000 shilling which they can operate for the small farm but they don't want to listen they say when i put something which is 200000 and my production will be 400000 shilling <laughs> so, <it's, laughs> so all that things uh, people uh, farmers you know i i see that farmers are like poor people and poor I, they are like they are not smart they are very means what i can say when you go to the farmers really i can say just is a good example when you go to the farmers who are just behind the road and that farmer will see the kid is with you that farmer will give you two bananas or four bananas extra on one bunch have you seen anywhere in you go in the medicine and they will give you something free no they don't give <laughs> so only who are good people i can say is a farmers only who can give <laughs> something extra because if you ask them i give me one one bag of uh, one bag of rice when you go to the farmers oh, that bag is 25 kg he will give one kg two kg extra as he as he is a happy person but doesn't happen in any another industry so i can say these things makes lot of difference to the people until we don't educate them on the technology and know how in and out what is there in the industry not to get fooled by the marketing people that is what i can say when i'm listening to you gentlemen one of the things that that's sticking to me is uh, is precision farming and how precision what a big difference precision farming can make and what it will take in order for you to implement precision farming i mean and if i have to it, it is very far and like sushant is saying if i will just give you a kilo extra because that's the nature of the bean um but if it's if you compare of the farming industry with construction a construction project manager will never build you an extra room just for free because it fits into the plan <laughs> you know or things like that or the project management there is so precise that uh, i might need so many windows but i'm only going to buy this because the risk of having those around is uh, is um, uh, it, you know it's going to cost me more so is that within the farming industry is it made possible with technology i think it is you've explained yourself uh, when it came to that the precision in the soil the precision as to what needs not just listening to marketing people so there's so many aspects here and, I, and when i listen to you as well there's so many uh, um base knowledge of farming is just how to do right the background which is assumed every farmer know and every farmer does know this because they've learned it naturally is the project management of farming the economics of, of farming the 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 investment in farming that you have to calculate the whole time if i plot this this is what my investment might be let me see what the uh, what what the prices are doing with this you know so i think there's so many aspects here that it doesn't make sense to me at all that this is not an attractive profession apart from you work from home the whole time <laughs> in the na- in nature embracing what is around you right and this is I, i'm talking about the producing of farm so the actual the actual job they are so yeah marketing this information and making the profession not just attractive but essential i think is 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 what the task that we have as educators in um, in 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 the world right uh, if we want to reach people we need to reach and make sure that they make a difference in what is the most important industry with the return on investment being being the highest because we are a business school we have to talk language like that right um and we are saying that if you farm precisely you using the technology that you are invest in the resources that gives you that precision your the money that you are going to make is just going to escalate um yeah. yeah so so as a final thought then because i see our time is also running out what which do, do you think is or what is the the final what would you like the participants to have heard the most in 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 this uh, in this webinar what what is it that we we want them to take away with them 
I don't know, your final thoughts. Um, shall we ask Sushant? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What I can say, uh, if if the if the students are, are there, the part participant or the farmers as a participant, let's me think as a participants are the students. Uh, what I want them to uh, come across is uh, whenever they are going for the courses, and if they select the courses, uh, just like agriculture, in between there's a breaks. So I feel for them that when they are in the breaks is better they attend some projects or they do small internships in that between instead of wasting the time because you know there's a two weeks or three weeks gaps are there and there's small small courses are there or there's a small small internship people can offer like farms like us a lot of seed industries there another lot of allied industries are there about uh, about agriculture so they can able to learn more about agriculture and they, they will gain the confidence in different eras of the agriculture because in in uh, farming business also there are different different fields are there that means there's a production team there's a marketing team there's a processing team there's a value addition team so they they can able to know where to fix them where they are going mm -hmm. because sometimes students they, they're not able to understand where they are going and then they go uh, because some of the students are good in the marketing, good are talkative, but because of they are not knowing the potential, they go in the production and they get failed in the production. And then their confidence level goes down. And then they feel that this field is not good for me. Let me look for another field or they, they drop on that and then they go to another course or go to the do the another jobs. They're educated in agriculture, but they do might be doing the another jobs, but only mm -hmm. because of these things. So I feel in the short term courses are very important for as a students and likeliness or the passion about agriculture learning more about agriculture continuously is very important but schools like you i i, I feel that you people should be calling some entrepreneurs to the schools where they can talk about agriculture how they how they become a successful how where they started because always when you were all entrepreneurs we talk about or the businessmen we talk about this this a lot with the losses first i think out of 100 might be 80 80 percent people are like that they first year second year three years they struggle from the fourth year they picked up and their stories are very nice ones the 20 percent people are from the start they are successful so with this at least students will be able to know how become a good successful businessman or good good as a in the job or they will just get some uh, like uh, what i can say some motivation to what they are doing it otherwise sometimes when there is no motivation or you don't know your goals what you're going to do it or you don't know in next three years or four years where you will be then it's like they don't have any plan or there's no any road map or you're just doing because my mom or dad said to go and do these courses Sometimes that is a thing happens. So that is what I can say. Then the timetable or making their schedules, that is both for the anybody's about doing the business or who is a student. Doing the timetable about the work is very important. So you should have your own targets. So today's one to two, I'm doing those, two to three, I'm doing this, four to five, I'm doing this. Because I see the internet is become very cheap. And then uh, people are or students uh, say spending a lot of time on internet, on the social media, and some of is un some 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 of the things are unnecessary. You know, as as you are not able to go out to take a walk and you want to relieve yourself with social media, but there should be time frame because social media is something you want to spend ten minutes, you will spend half hour. Social media is like that. So changing the mindset of the kids or putting something in their mind is very important. Otherwise, a lot of kids or the, a lot of students are getting wasted with the social media, which is unnecessary. Some is good, some is bad. So there is always positive side, there's a negative side. But anyhow, mm -hmm. how I see the things are going around is more on the negative <laughs> because of the COVID time. A uh, lot of the people went on the uh, social media, started making the videos. Everybody want to be YouTube blogger now. <laughs> so that is a social media. Yeah, quick money. But it is not a long term. We, that is as a fun era, as a something you can do it. But you need to know your aim, what is what you want it to be. And uh, for the the farmers or uh, who is doing business, what to know, tell them about the just 
that what they are doing should they should have the roadmap for it they should have the planning for it and they should know what they are doing it what is the purpose of it so sometimes like i have some neighbors in india who does the farming they put 100000 they get 100000 back so there's no profit no loss but still they are working because they, they they have the passion about it but you know people should understand if you put 100000 you should get 200000 return back you should have monthly analysis you should have quarterly analysis you should have yearly analysis what you are doing how you are doing it and things need to be implemented and for that education is very important i glad to hear that there is some injuries are with mr humphrey working and educating the people and educating the farmers it's very very important to educate the farmers to become make business profitable otherwise just putting putting in the ground is is not helping because you are just uh, because now people are talking about the carbon footprints also the european countries so how to make a sustainable sustainable business or sustainable farming is very important and for that we need to add up new new things that is like a precision farming which is uh, which i can say is a good thing then organic farming is there a lot of people are talking about the uh, natural farming also where you can use the natural input so your cost is not uh, very less but you can produce what you are producing with the synthetic so le using the less inputs is also important and finding the solutions locally is very important mm -hmm. and uh, with that i think uh, the business can be very successful for everybody and we can attract the students or the youngsters to come in this as if we educate them and we can show them the potential what is there because for kenya also a lot of big potential is on processing industry so when the things are getting produced processing industry can play big role in this because you are producing tomatoes you are producing onions or sometimes when the prices are not good you just go to processing now people are producing onion uh, paste is there, garlic paste is there, tomato paste is there, and you can store it for long term in the cold storage. So that is something like a technology. And then you store it, and when the prices go becomes better, then you take the things out, yeah. or still the your quality is much better. You can approach some of the buyers, some of the big people where you can be like a like a third party who are producing and they are doing the marketing themselves. So a lot of things are there, but it need to be get explored by the people. Yeah. Thank you so much. So the opportunities are there. People just need to grab onto them and, and, and take hold of them and run, run with that. I also liked your idea where you were talking about this internships. It's important for anybody in any industry. If this is what you're passionate and interested in, but you haven't done it before, it is the responsibility that you have to do to yourself to actually go for these internships at the farms, like you were saying, uh, your farm is doing that, Sushant. It's, it's very, very important to, yeah. to establish whether that passion is or where that passion should be driven to. Yeah. Mr. Hump, if you would like to give us your final thoughts, something that you would like uh, the, the listeners to take away with them. Yeah, I think I will agree with my brother Shushant. I think there is a lot of opportunities. Mm -hmm. Anytime you see challenges, the other, somebody say that every cloud has a silver lining. There are opportunities as well. And so for me, I see there's room for technology innovators to help us replicate what we are seeing in developing countries like Israel, but develop those technology locally here so that we can start shifting slowly towards precision agriculture and such kind of things. Um, those technologies that we can import, yes, we can import, but I think there's also a lot of room for innovation among our young people, um, our engineers, our ICT individuals, yeah, to develop these technologies which can be utilized in agriculture. And now also for the farmers, I think my challenge is that farmers also should embrace these technologies and not just do things traditionally, as you know, you say maybe our fathers used to do this, there should be a reason behind everything that you do so that we avoid wasting a lot of money on inputs and only invest that, that which is really needed uh, to ensure that we are reducing as much as possible on our expenses and maximizing on our profits. As my brother said, I think value addition is critical. So our farmers also need to do that. And as an organization also, we are looking into ways to help our farmers also do value addition. 
I'll give an example also. Most of our farmers in Kenya go into maize production. Whenever there's rain, they will go into maize production. Uh, some of our farmers in drier areas were planting maize, and at some point they would go to total loss because of the drought. We introduced a pasture production, and some of these farmers now are smiling all the way to the bank because with pasture, just some little investment you are able, and with little rain, you are able to get uh, to have a pasture. Now, when you sell your pasture in the form of hay, you are able to buy maize. So some of these things, it's just a change of the mindset and adapting maybe new technologies. That is what I would say. Agriculture is profitable, but you need to also think as a business person. Somebody say that any crop that is grown out of each season is a high value crop. It means when everybody else is doing maize, which other crop would you think of? that it will not be in market at that time, automatically it will go at a higher price. So it's just thinking of agriculture as a business and farmers will make money and also embracing technology. Lois, thank you so much. I'm so glad to be part of this discussion. Thank you. Thank you very much, Humphrey. Bupesh, I'm going to to you to wrap up the session, please, if you don't mind. Thank you sure. by thanking the panelists, wrap, wrap up and... Um, yeah, say our final goodbyes. Thank you so much, Linda. And uh, in a, before we wrap up, I'm just going to read out a couple of uh, comments that we've received, uh, very quick ones. And uh, yeah. and uh, the panelists, uh, I, I really thank you because, you know, when I see the comments, they really are appreciative of your of your thoughts and of your suggestions and uh, they are completely you know most of the comments are around uh, agriculture technology should be taken on priority there's an appeal to the government also uh, of course they 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 agree with the fact that the youth should be involved uh, and uh, there's, there's also focus on large scale cash crop farming right and uh, i think uh, it's just just a testament of uh, how how much did the you know the the people who were joined by us and they were enjoying the conversation. And uh, so I'm just going to, uh, you know, uh, wrap up by saying uh, an appeal that, uh, you know, just keep observing the changes, keep observing the trends, right? So challenge wherever is required, embrace technologies at all levels, uh, make the best of the resources available like this one, you know, uh, listening to Humphrey, listening to Sushant, you know, if I wasn't a farmer, you know, I know definitely a little bit about farming today. And there are, of course, there are good things and, and these people should make the best out of it. So, you know, make the best out of whatever resources that you have. And uh, and our last appeal to the government to make the credit system a little more uh, viable for, uh, for, for the farmers. Uh, and uh, again, thanking everyone for joining us. Hundreds of people who were a part of it on different platforms. Thank you so much, Humphrey. Thank you so much, Sushant, uh, for joining us and sharing the valuable views. Uh, a great thank to Linda. You're always, uh, always, always somebody to look up to. And, uh, you know, the, it gets moderated. Well, Linda is there. It gets moderated so uh, effortlessly. <laughs> so uh, absolutely delighted to be a part of this panel. Uh, bottom from high heart, uh, a big thanks to everyone. And uh, looking forward to, uh, you know, uh, get in touch and, and connect with you people separately as well. Yeah. yeah. Yes, thank you very much. Abhupesh, you know, it's always a pleasure for me to 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 do these things for you. And I, I really also would like to say thank you to, to the panelists and you for allowing me to do this, but to the panelists for sharing your insights and for, for, for sharing um, the importance of, of what the industry means to everybody and how much goes into uh, being successful within the industry. I specifically want to take you up, Humphrey, on that the next person, the next billionaire in Africa is going to be a farmer. You need to teach me stuff, you know, because I would definitely like to be that billionaire. <laughs> I'd like to do that. But I think that is a, a tall order and a very competitive world to be in. But I agree with you. It's just, uh, it's just been such fun. It's been wonderful listening to all of you. I'm very grateful for you sharing your thoughts, ideas, and your insights into the industry. Your personal stories as well. That's always a pleasure. And thank you very much for you, for you as well. Always being, being very mindful of of the the 
the business part of what we are doing here. So gentlemen, yep. I, I am saying thank you very much. I'm saying having a wonderful afternoon for those participants out there and those who have listened to us, grateful for your participant. Thank you so much for the comments that you made. And yeah, I'm looking forward to our next and looking forward to meeting and, 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 and talking to the panelists soon as well. Thank you, everybody. I have had a wonderful time. Have a wonderful afternoon. Have a great day, everyone. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you. It was Thank a pleasure. You. Bye. 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 Thanks. Bye-bye, gentlemen. Thanks.